Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yasudian, one of the dermatologists based in the UK. Today I thought I would look at chronic prurigo, a relatively new definition for an entity that has been present for a long time. The term chronic prurigo was proposed by the European Academy of Dermatologists, the EADV, in 2018 and has three main diagnostic criteria. These are firstly the presence of chronic pruritus with a duration of at least six weeks regardless of its origins. Secondly, evidence by medical history or physical examination of prolonged scratching behavior, for example, excoriations or scars. And thirdly, the presence of generalized or localized pruriginous lesions. Underlying chronic prurigo, there may be a host of other conditions. It's associated with dermatoses like atopic eczema and psoriasis. Systemic conditions, including diabetes and renal dysfunction, or malignancies like Hodgkin's lymphoma can also predispose to chronic prurigo. It has been associated with depression, anxiety, and neuropathic conditions like post-hepatic neuralgia. In many, the etiology may be multifactorial, as more than one underlying condition can be present. So what is the pathophysiological concept of chronic prurigo? Chronic itch arises from various conditions of different origins, which we've just discussed, and may lead to a prolonged scratching behavior, and this is called the induction phase. Both the chronic itch and the scratching behavior induce sensitization mechanisms, which contribute to the development and perpetuation of pruriginous lesions, and this is called the disease stage. Pathologically, dysregulation of both neuropeptides, including calcitonin gene-related protein and substance P, have been implicated in the pathogenesis of chronic prurigo. Immunological changes in the skin generate an inflammatory response and intense itching by releasing mediators such as interleukin-31, eosinophil cationic protein, histamine, and neuropeptides. Clinically, the most important symptom is pruritus. It's important to note that itching is present even non-lesional skin in chronic prurigo. The condition is commoner in females except when the morphology is umbilicated or ulcerated, where it's commoner in males. Almost all patients report that they scratch themselves and they are aware that it injures the skin. In about 40%, they state that it aggravates the pruritus. Some also mention that they do it unconsciously. Chronic prurigo is an umbrella term for a range of clinical manifestations. They can be skin-colored or erythematous papules that are generally hyperkeratotic or excoriated. The cl clinical phenotypes can be classified as chronic nodular prurigo if nodules predominate, chronic papular prurigo if papules predominate, plaque prurigo if plaques are prominent, and umbilicated prurigo if they are ulcerated lesions. Patients typically display the butterfly sign, where the skin on the upper aspect of the back is spared because they can't reach it. Chronic prurigo remains a difficult condition to manage because there are currently no proved targeted treatments. The overall goal in treating it is to break the itch scratch cycle and reduce pruritus to heal nodules. Treatment regimes should address both the neural and immunological components of the disease. This is best achieved by using a multimodal regime, including topical and systemic therapies. The first line topical therapy remains high potency topical corticosteroids under occlusion. In addition to enhancing the effect of the medication, Occlusion also acts as a physical aversion to scratching the skin. Intralesional triamcinolone injections can be effective in alleviating the pruritus and flattening the lesions. Topical calcineurin inhibitors can also be beneficial. Next is ultraviolet light, and that is effective in reducing the pruritus through its anti-inflammatory effects. This is a particularly useful option in medically complex patients whose treatment options may be limited by comorbidities and drug interactions with other more potent systemic medications. Patients with chronic prurigo usually require treatment with systemic therapies because many of them are refractory to the previous topical agents mentioned. Systemic options include immunosuppressants, neuromodulatory, and other agents. Prurigo is predominantly a non-histaminic itch condition, and therapy with antihistaminic agents alone is generally ineffective, aside from its sedative properties. Immunosuppressants that have been used to treat chronic prurigo include methotrexate and cyclosporin. Methotrexate seems to be the safest option, and in a series published in Clinical and Experimental Dermatology a few years ago, 
there was resolution of skin lesions with just 10 milligrams a week within three months of treatment. Treatment can also include several agents specifically targeting the neural pathogenesis of itch transmission, which spans from neural innervation of the skin to the dorsal nerve root ganglion, traversing to the spinal cord right to the brain. Drugs that can be helpful include gabapentinoids like gabapentin and pregabalin and antidepressants like amitriptyline and nortriptyline. Thalidomide and opioid receptor antagonists may also be helpful. Finally, newer generation biologics like nemalizumab, dupilumab and the JAK kinase inhibitors have shown much promise in the treatment of this condition. Following the recent discovery of elevated levels of interleukin-31 in patients with prurigo, a clinical trial on subcutaneous nemalizumab, a humanized antibody against IL-31, receptor A, reported significant improvement in prurigo. So to recap, chronic prurigo is a new umbrella term for a variety of morphological skin lesions that present with various underlying skin and systemic conditions. Neurological, and immunological factors play a role, and hence treating both aspects would result in optimal symptomatic benefit. Overall, however, it can be difficult to manage, and we should aim to control rather than cure the condition. I hope you found this information helpful. Thanks for listening, and bye.